Hi, I'm Jill Feldman, lung cancer patient and advocate. Hi everyone, I'm Christine Lovely. I'm a lung cancer physician and scientist. And welcome to Hope With Answers. Today we will be talking about small cell lung cancer and Montessa Lee is a 14 year small cell lung cancer wow. survivor. Unfortunately, she can't be here with us today in person, but she has on video asked a couple of questions that are directed towards you, if that's okay. Wonderful. Hi, Montessa. I hope to meet you in person sometime uh, someday, and thank you for the questions. Hi, my name is Montessa Lee, and I am a lung cancer patient advocate and a small cell lung cancer survivor. Dr. Lovely, Thank you for the work that you do to improve outcomes for patients diagnosed with lung cancer. I have a few questions. I know that you are studying risk factors that might put a person at risk for developing small cell lung cancer. Have there been any correlations between family history and people being diagnosed with small cell lung cancer? I think it's a great question and a very important one. And honestly, a question that we ask for a lot of different cancer mm -hmm. types. Right now, unfortunately, there is no clear risk factor that you can inherit from your mom or your dad that would predispose somebody to getting small cell lung cancer. My hope is, though, that through research studies, such as the ones ongoing in my lab and in many different laboratories around the world, that we will be able to answer this question for, honestly, for small cell lung cancer and for other types of lung cancer as well. We also know that non-small cell lung cancer can be broken down into various subtypes. Do you see small cell lung cancer being broken down into various subtypes in the future? So Montessa, another great question. And I'm gonna take a back, step back and say, let's make a comparison to non-small cell lung cancer. So for everyone watching this video, for non-small cell lung cancer, for patients who are diagnosed, we typically think about getting the tumor biopsy, getting tumor testing, molecular testing of that tumor biopsy, and then trying to figure out, can we match what we find in the tumor molecular testing or genetic testing, same thing. Can we find that, take that testing result and help to match a therapy? That's what we call precision medicine or personalized medicine. And it has really absolutely revolutionized the way we treat non-small cell lung cancer with all these markers like EGFR and ALK and ROS1 and RET and NTRAC, and that's fantastic. Unfortunately, for a small cell lung cancer, we do not have that same concept. It does not apply in 2019 to the treatment of small cell lung cancer. So it is not typical for patients who have small cell lung cancer to get genetic testing of their tumor sample. It is my great hope that that will change in the not too distant future, but the markers we're gonna think about for small cell lung cancer are going to be very different than the markers we think about for non-small cell lung cancer. So if we, again, make a parallel between non-small cell lung cancer and small cell lung cancer, for non-small cell, we think about EGFR, ALK, ROS1. Those are not gonna be found typically in small cell lung cancer. We're gonna be thinking about a different set of markers, things like ASCL1, NeuroD1, POW2F3, things that we are thinking about right now on the research side that have really not yet made their way into the clinic. But stay tuned, everyone, because it is my hope that these will be markers that we think about more in the clinic in the near future. Yes, we need more advancements in small stuff. Absolutely. What major breakthroughs and treatment options for small cell lung cancer do you anticipate will be available in the near future for patients? I will start by saying in March of 2019, we had a major change in how small cell lung cancer is treated. And I'm predominantly talking about extensive stage small cell lung cancer or metastatic small cell lung cancer. So for about 30 years, patients with small cell lung cancer were treated with chemotherapy and two specific chemotherapies, a platinum drug like carboplatin or cisplatin with a drug called etoposide. Those are two kinds of chemotherapy. In March 2019, the US FDA approved the use of a chemotherapy, or sorry, an immunotherapy medicine with chemotherapy. So we now have chemotherapy plus immunotherapy for small cell lung cancer. And that was based on a very large international study that was done. What I'm most excited about for small cell lung cancer, I think it's great that we have a new treatment option. I think it's very important that we learn how to best utilize immunotherapy in small cell lung cancer. And this is a huge topic for all cancers, but I think 
especially for small cell lung cancer, there's a marker called PDL1 that we measure for non small cell lung cancer that seems to track with responses to immunotherapy. That does not appear to be the case in small cell lung cancer. So, less than 20% of small cell lung cancers express PDL1, even though we use these immunotherapy drugs. And I'm hopeful that research that's ongoing will help us to better understand which patients with small cell lung cancer are going to respond to chemotherapy and immunotherapy, and how can we get more patients to respond to the combination? Okay. Wow, that's great information, and thank you so much for your passion and your dedication to research in small cell lung cancer because we desperately need it. And well, thank, thank you, you so much for having me, and to all the patients and healthcare providers and advocates out there, Please use your voice for small cell lung cancer. We need more advocates in this space. It is very important for patients to get on study so that we can really take small cell lung cancer to the next level. It's been decades since we had major advancements and we're all desperately looking for those really new um, cutting edge treatments for these patients. Great, thank you for joining us. Thank Let's you. Let's with answers.